All rise, the Governor General, Dame Cecile Lagranade. Everyone, please remain standing. We're going to commence with the national anthem. Hold one second for me. Hold one second for me. Let me let Dr. Joseph have a seat, please. One second. National anthem. at this time. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to recognize the presence of Her Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Governor General of Grenada. May I be permitted to recognize also the presence of the Prime Minister, the Honorable Mr. Dickon Mitchell. Your Excellency, Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Governor General of Grenada, Carrier Coup, and Petite Martinique, the Honorable Mr. Dickon Mitchell, Prime Minister of our Tri Island State, other members of the Houses of Parliament, both upper and lower houses, Leader of Her Majesty's Opposition, the Right Honorable. Keith, sorry, the Right Honorable Dr. Keith Mitchell, Dr. Lawrence Joseph, Knight of the King, and Lady Anandi Trotman Joseph, Justices of Appeal and High Court Judges of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Masters of the High Court of Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, visiting justices of other courts established in the wider organization of Eastern Caribbean states, members of the inner bar of Grenada and the Eastern Caribbean states, members of the utter bar of Grenada and other member states forming the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Ms. Claudette Joseph, Attorney General of Grenada, 
other senior public officials and members, His Grace Clyde Harvey, Bishop of the Diocese of Grenada, and Presider Father Ronald Holder, other dignitaries and special invitees, esteemed friends, associates, and well-wishers. Last but not, but most importantly today, bereaved sisters, Mrs. Patricia Joseph Revere, Mrs. Jean Ortega, Dr. Marguerite Joan Joseph, nieces and nephews and wider family circle of the Honorable Dame Monica Teresa Joseph. Those joining us here in this hallowed and time-honored cathedral and virtually, good afternoon. Legend has it that when the Almighty God was sending a baby into the world, this baby had the unique opportunity of meeting her maker one and one. And the Almighty God gave her a tablet of old, made of parchment. He gave her an inkwell and he gave her a pen. And he told her, I am sending you into the world and I want you to write down what you want to do with your life on the other side. She wrote it down the way she wanted, line by line, precept by precept, and she delivered it over to the Almighty God. When God saw it, he read it, and he saw that she knew exactly what she wanted to do on the face of the earth. But God felt that if I let you go with all the things that you have written down, I don't want you to lose sight of the fact that I am the Almighty God. So what did Almighty God do? He put in some hurdles in her way, but made sure that she would overcome all those hurdles through the connective power of prayer. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, we are gathered here today to pay tribute to that child who was commissioned by Almighty God into the world. That child is none other than the Honorable Monica Teresa Joseph, Commander of the Order of the British Empire, Honorary Doctor of Laws, Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire, Stateswoman of Grenada, Cariacou, and Petite Martinique, First Lady of Justice over the Supreme Courts of our Eastern Caribbean states, Commissioner, beloved sister and aunt, faithful servant of God. She, with a, a willingness to leave our shores, a characteristic of larger vessels, armed with the highest of ideals, perseverance, and faith, aligned and connected her purpose to a greater calling. She greatly endeavored to be of service to mankind, to her region and country. In the words of renowned English poet John Donne, no man is an island, entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a clod be washed away by the sea, Europe is the less, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls, it tolls for thee. In obedience to the toll, she came within the sight of the castle of her dreams. God considered her estate and with his scepter favored the cause of his handmaiden in ways greater than she could have possibly imagined. 
overcoming each degree. In the end, her virtuous hand received lofty bestowments of Commander of the Order of the British Empire, Honorary Doctor of Laws, Dame Commander of the British Empire, Commissioner par excellence, faithful servant of God, First Lady of Justice over the Supreme Courts of our Eastern Caribbean states, and faithful servant of her people. In the next couple hours, we will try to capture the essence of the woman in tribute. As hard as it is to compress 89 years, almost nine decades, into two hours, this segment will present a cameo, if you will, of this extraordinary woman. You will hear about her courage. You will hear about her charisma. You will hear about her contributions, and you will realize that truly, we are not here to mourn, but to celebrate the life of a lady that was very well spent. I am Jenny Lynn Eleanor Etienne, member of the inner bar of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. I am the junior cousin of the Monica and I count it an honor to chair this homage and solemn farewell to our dean, because ladies and gentlemen, I have sat on the shoulders of greatness. I therefore deem that this afternoon of tributes is now called to order. To begin, we shall hear from our esteemed president, of the, our immediate past president, sorry, of the Organization of Commonwealth Caribbean Bar Associations, OGBA, our very own Ruggles Ferguson, Her Majesty's King's Council. King's Council, I welcome you and invite you to this podium. Dean Cecile, Prime Minister, Leader of the Opposition, Honorable Judges, Magistrates, Masters, other members of the Judiciary, colleagues, family of Justice, siblings, and other close family of Justice Monica Joseph. The honor and privilege is certainly mine to be called upon to pay tribute to the Monica this afternoon. And I do so not just personally, but on behalf of the Organization of Commonwealth Caribbean Bar Associations and the OECS Bar Association, of which I served as past president. A trailblazer has passed on after leaving an indelible mark on the legal profession in which she played a significant and multifaceted role for more than 55 years. Beyond the legal profession, she also played a hugely instrumental role in many spheres of public life, in guiding and shaping young minds empowering and instilling self-confidence in our women, historically discriminated against for centuries, and in laying the foundation for the proper and honest discharge of duties by public officials and others. The life of the Monica Joseph is etched in public service, whether within or outside the legal profession. 
retirement from the bench in 1996, due solely to mandatory age requirements, was simply a new phase of her life, which opened new opportunities for her to serve in so many other fields, which neither time nor position allowed her to serve in before. The Monica Joseph entered an overwhelmingly male-dominated profession in November 1966 when she was called to the bar Lincoln's Inn in the United Kingdom, beginning a 56-year prolific career in the legal profession. Women of the world, far less the Caribbean, far less tiny, insignificant Grenada, a mere dot on the map, were then very few and far between in the profession, with the number serving the entire Eastern Caribbean capable of being counted on the fingers of one hand. She braved the unknown, thousands of miles away, with all its hostile weather conditions and racial inequalities, to begin the process of shattering glass ceilings and paving the way for others. At the time, she was not blessed with the greater convenience of attending the UE Faculty of Law, established later in 1970, or the regional law schools established in Jamaica and Trinidad in 1973, well after her call to the bar. Up to the later 1980s, early 1990s, the trend continued of male faces dominating fledging university faculties and professional law schools in the Caribbean. With the same scenario reflected in private practice, public service, the magistracy, and the benches of the High Court and Court of Appeal. It is in this context that the elevation of Monica Joseph to High Court judge in 1982 ought to be particularly appreciated and hailed. Through hard work, sheer grit and determination, driven by a burning desire to succeed and prove the naysayers wrong, the Monica entered that male-dominated world and steadily and patiently worked her way up the ladder of professional success. Her experience as legal assistant, Crown Counsel, Senior Crown Counsel, Solicitor General, and Acting DPP, all in St. Vincent and the Grenadines between 1972 and 1982, served as solid preparation for her new role only 16 years after her admission to Lincoln's Inn. It was only nine years later she scored another landmark achievement by becoming the first woman to sit on the OECS Court of Appeal as an acting justice of appeal. She did so several times until her retirement in January 1996. That's acted as a justice of appeal. Too often, we wait until someone departs before recognizing and demonstrating appreciation for his or her work. Thankfully, that has not been the case with the Monica. In June 2026, or June 2016, sorry, within days of the expiry of my last term as president of the Grenada Bar Association, the Monica and other senior lawyers, some over 80 years and others practicing for more than 50 years, were honored at a special ceremony at the Flamboyant Hotel. In fact, it was the last activity held at the conference room of the Flamboyant Hotel before that hotel was demolished. The Monica was recognized by the bar for her sterling contribution to the legal profession and for her landmark achievement as being the first female judge of the OECS. She had a particularly enjoyable evening in the company of two of her dear siblings. In 2011, the Monica was bestowed by the University of the West Indies 
with the honorary degree of Doctor of Laws. In 2017, on the 50th anniversary of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, she was again recognized and honored by the judiciary of the Eastern Caribbean. Among her later and very prestigious awards came in 2020 from the Academy of Law of the Caribbean Court of Justice. She was recognized then as one of the 34 pioneering jurists in the Caribbean. She ranked among prominent names as Justice Desiree Bernard of Guyana, the first female judge to sit on the CCJ and who also became the first female High Court judge in Guyana in 1980, two years before the Monica, and the first Court of Appeal judge in that country in 1992, one year after the Monica. And I must say again to emphasize that achievement of the Monica, the first female judge in Suriname to be appointed in Suriname was only appointed in 1997, 15 years after the Monica herself was appointed in the Eastern Caribbean. In the later night, very significant has been the Monica's dedication to public life in her own humble and community-spirited way, post her retirement from the bench in 1996. In the 1970s, 80s, and 90s, the main beneficiary of her professional and community life was St. Vincent and the Grenadines, of which country she became a citizen. In the later 1990s, however, up to her passing on June 6, 2023, Grenada became the main beneficiary of her vast experience which she willingly shared in the field of sports, public administration, and anti-corruption, to name a few. No true history of the legal profession of the Eastern Caribbean can be written without the name of the dame, assuming pride of place as a trailblazer, triumphing against the odds, and blazing the trail as a shining example for the scores of women who followed her path. In the legal profession today, women adorn the high court bench throughout the OECS. We now have a female Chief Justice for the first time in 2012 and Chairperson of the Judicial and Legal Services Commission in the person of the Janice Pereira. Women dominate the magistracy. All six or five magistrates in Grenada today are women. Women are in the majority in the profession. The faculties of law and the law schools throughout the region continue to consistently churn out an overwhelming majority of female graduates. Dame Monica just paved the way. I must say on a personal note that we became very close after having some exchanges, I should say, in 2005. And I see some of the players involved in 2005 um, at the funeral today. I think in 2005, February 2005, the Grenada Bar Association created history in the Commonwealth when it boycotted the courts at all levels, the magistracy, the High Court, and the Court of Appeal for one full month in protest against a certain appointment uh, being made. And uh, the Modica was one of the persons who sat on the Judicial and Legal Services Commission. And uh, it was that commission that eventually um, agreed with the submissions of the bar and uh, declined to do the appointment, which was history in itself. But in our interaction, and I remember Dr. Alexis and myself attended the meeting, um, uh, I had to make clear there that though the bar defends the bench, that we were an independent institution. We take independent 
decisions, we take directions from no one. And though there was a disagreement in the way that we handled it, it felt it was felt then that it had been handled differently. Um, and the Monica was one of those leaders. Uh, but then we begged to differ. But what I particularly respect about her, and we became very close after, particularly over the last 10 years, and uh, where we spoke quite a lot, um, she called me on many issues, and I think there was some mutual respect that came out of that own experience. And what I can say is that up to her very last, very last, um, she passed away on July 6th. Uh, she maintained her own sense of dignity and professionalism. Uh, as I said, I had the opportunity to interface with her many times during the, her last months on this earth. And what I can say to her family, her siblings, that she really loved her siblings dearly, uh, respected her siblings dearly, and she remained professional to the very end. In fact, one of the things she was behind me to do up to early 2023 is to find that office for her so she can uh, um, do her work and continue to do her professional opinions. And I said, well, the technology has changed, so you don't need offices these days. You can operate by your home or you can operate from my office, but you don't need that physical office. But somehow she had that stuck in her own mind that she, her days as a legal professional was not over and that she was prepared to continue that work. Of course, there were other plans for her. The Monica will be remembered as fiercely independent-minded, reasoned, disciplined, principled, and hardworking with a great social conscience. She used her skills to help humanity. Farewell, De Monica. You will be surely memorialized and remembered as the woman of many first. The first OECS female judge and justice of appeal. First retired judge to serve as president of the Grenada Netball Association. First retired judge to serve as chair of the Grenada Public Service Commission and first female retired judge to serve as chairman of the Integrity Commission. And you will hear much more of that later on. To her dear siblings and family, continue to take comfort in the many positive memories of the Monica and in her great accomplishments as a pioneer, pioneering and trailblazing woman, not just in Grenada, but also the Caribbean and the wider Commonwealth. Ogba salutes you, De Monica. The OECS bar salutes you. May you rest in perfect peace. Thank you, King's Council Ferguson, for your kind reminder of what a trailblazer De Monica truly was. I would like to invite to the podium Ambassador Gillian Bristol, Chairman of the Integrity Commission of Grenada. Ambassador Bristol. Good afternoon. I stand on protocol as established. It is my sad and unenviable duty to stand before you today to pay tribute to our late sister of this soil of Grenada, Her Ladyship, the Honorable Dame Monica Joseph. Dame Monica began her stint with the Integrity Commission on November 13, in November 2013 having retired as a judge of the Supreme Court 
of the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States. She was among the many first mentioned by my esteemed colleague, uh, King's Counsel Ruggles Ferguson. She was the first female chairperson of the esteemed body, the Grenada Integrity Commission, that I now have the privilege to lead. Her team of commissioners included Lady Anande Trotman Joseph, Miss Daniela Williams, Mrs. Ophariwa Augustine, Mr. Robert Robinson, Mr. Bertie Hill, and Mr. Rupert Agostini. During her tenure, which ended in February of 2017, De Monica was instrumental in developing internal structures, processes, and guidelines for compliance with the Integrity in Public Life Act, all of which afforded a high degree of efficiency for the then fledgling commission. Many of these structures, if not all of them, are still in effect, a testimony to her organizational shrewdness and sound judgment. I am pleased to share that thanks to her efforts, these safeguarding processes and methodologies have led to the recognition of Grenada's Integrity Commission as an exemplary model for the Caribbean region. The late Justice Joseph is remembered with great admiration by all who worked with her for her sterling leadership and her commitment to the wholesome <coughs> expansion of the Integrity Commission. She was a stickler for detail, and nothing left the office without going through established systems of examination and the requisite stamp of approval. I am told that when she gave instructions or asked a question, and the subject of her attention appeared perplexed, she would unfailingly quip, quip and what is operating in your mind? I can see some of you smiling as you recall your own experience with that well-known response of hers. De Monica was a trailblazer, and so among the many paths that she blazed was the establishment of the Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti-Corruption Bodies, and she became its first chairperson in 2015. Indeed, in testimony to her high standards and good management, the inaugural conference of that uh, association was hosted by Grenada, and it was such a success that it has become known as the Grenada model. As a champion for integrity in public life, De Monica left an indelible mark on the regional anti-corruption campaign, and she was honored for this with due recognition bestowed on her by both the Commonwealth Secretariat and by that Caribbean, Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions. As much as she is revered for her public role in the judiciary and for her stance on integrity in public life, De Monica is equally and fondly remembered for her genuine love and concern for, man for humankind and for her compassion demonstrated to all who worked with her and all whom she met. As I serve now as chairperson of the Integrity Commission, Following in De Monica's footsteps and building on the foundation which she laid some 10 years ago, she has unwittingly perhaps left me no choice but to reiterate my own commitment to assiduously advancing the culture of integrity in public life in Grenada in honor of her memory and legacy. Her passing has created a loss, but it also provides an opportunity for us all to renew our aspirations to her high standards of ethics and compassion. On behalf of my fellow commissioners, the staff of the commission, and on my own behalf, I renew to her family and to the legal fraternity our expressions of heartfelt sympathy as we pray that her soul will rest in peace eternal. Grateful to you, Ambassador Bristol. Ave Maria, gracia plena, dominus tecum. Adapted to the musical composition of Franz Schubert, will now be performed by, by Mrs. Miss Lauren Ramdani, accompanied by Mrs. Regan Mendez. A fitting prayer.
celestial music. Thank you, Miss Lauren Ramdani and Mrs. Regan Mendez. The next item on our program should have been a tribute by Dame Dancia Penn OBE, King's Council, former Deputy Governor of the British Virgin Islands. In her words, Dame Dancia Penn remarked, Monica did remarkably for all of the people of the British Virgin Islands and for me personally, and for this she ought to be thanked. King's Council was overcome by the reality of inter-island travel and despite having a strong desire not to miss this service, she was not able to be here. We thank King's Council Penn for her kind words and efforts. And next we'll hear from our own songbird, Dr. Jennifer Isaacs, together with Mr. Randall Robinson, performing the prayer.
watch us where we go. And help us to be wise in times when we don't know. my prayers sounded like that in the ears of Almighty God. Ladies and gentlemen, I realize that tucked away in my notes, my clock received a tribute from 
Premier, King's Council, the Honorable Dame Penn. And so I would now take this opportunity, having found the same, to read it to you. In tribute to Dame Monica Teresa Joseph, Commander of the British Empire, Dame of the British Empire, Doctor of Laws. It is with deep sadness and a mixture of beautiful thoughts and memories that I write these few words in tribute to a wonderful life of sterling service and stewardship. I first met De Monica in the early 1980s when she was Solicitor General of the St. Vincent and the Grenadines, sorry, and we were both attending a conference at the headquarters of the United Nations in New York. As is well known, De Monica was the first woman to be appointed as a judge of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court. Shortly after her appointment to the bench, it was an honor and a privilege for the Virgin Islands to welcome Dame Monica as our first ever resident High Court judge in 1982. Prior to that, the Virgin Islands was served by judges, all men, who came on circuit a few times a year. It is a matter of enduring record that in the position of our first resident High Court judge, Dame Monica set the highest and best standards as a judge and for the institution of the judiciary. Her commanding physical presence, her apparent stern demeanor, and her ever-present gentle smile engendered the love and respect of the legal profession as well as that of the wider community. It was De Monica who instituted the tradition, which still continues, of an annual church service to mark the commencement of the law year. She was known to be a fair, thorough, and scrupulous judge, and she was a mentor to many young lawyers. She did a great deal to promote and foster strong relations between the bench and the bar. In the years when she lived in the Virgin Islands, De Monica was an active member of St. William's Catholic Church in Road Town, and she contributed significantly to the music industry in particular. De Monica was held in such high regard in the Virgin Islands that she was entrusted across the political spectrum, that she was trusted, sorry, across the political spectrum and the country to be appointed as the last constitutional boundaries commissioner for the Virgin Islands. Her work on this and her recommendations remain in place today. De Monica and I were close personal friends. We have shared much together over the years and spoke regularly by telephone. We shared so much and our pains, and of course, lots of good, healthy laughter and times together. I valued her sage, candid advice and continued to abide by much of it. De Monica's life was of sterling, noble service to our region and to her fellow men. She served with grace, balance, and equanimity, and we are all poorer for her loss. My entire family knew and loved De Monica and joins me in extending condolences to her family on her sad passing. Signed, Dancia Penn, or the Order of the British Empire, King's Council dated 24th July 2023, Road Town Tortola, British Virgin Islands. We thank King's Council Penn for her kind utterances. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my esteemed honor 
to invite to the podium my learned friend and president of the Grenada Bar Association, Mr. Derek Sylvester. Welcome, Mr. Sylvester. Our Excellency Dame Cecile Lagrenade, Governor General of Grenada, Honorable Deacon Mitchell, Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. the Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, Leader of the Opposition of Grenada, Honorable Attorney General uh, Claudette Joseph, to our distinguished judges, Justice Paula Guilford, Justice Ralston Glasgow, Justice Agnes Acti, and our very own Justice Tamara Gill. Our Chief Magistrate, Francine Foster, Magistrate Tahira Jalino, and Magistrate Sabina Gibbs. Distinguished King's Councils, colleagues, and family of Justice Joseph. In my capacity as president of the Grenada Bar Association, I wish to utter a few words. Justice Monica Theresa Joseph, she was a distinguished and respected retired High Court judge, deserving nothing less than a heartfelt tribute for her invaluable contributions to the field, to the field of law, the pursuit of justice, and the betterment of our society as a whole. Throughout her illustrious career, she exemplified unwavering integrity, dedication, and a profound commitment to upholding the principles of fairness and equality, a lesson that she has left with us all, to be honorable, decent, and respectful in all our dealings, a lesson I pray that we take home today. Justice Joseph, she has made significant contributions to the public service in Grenada, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and several other islands in every area, in every social area, be it education, labor, audit, legal affairs, prosecution. She also served as chairman of the Public Service Commission. And I pause here to say, and despite the fact I would have stated it yesterday at the special sitting, that throughout my tenure as chairman of the public service in 2013 to 2018, she was a source of encouragement, strength, and legal guidance for me when I sat in that chair. And I hasten to add and boast in her memory that every advice that she gave was upheld by the court. And the singular one that I did not accept history would record the direction it took. But in any event, I thank her personally for what she did for me and for what she did for the legal fraternity, not only locally, but also regionally. I would not rehash what was stated because I do not want to sound as an ill-tuned gitter, but you would have heard sufficient things being said from Mr. Ferguson, and I endorse and I accept wholeheartedly all the sentiments that he expressed in relation to uh, Justice Margaret Joseph. But please permit me. Let me air just for a few more minutes. Justice Joseph profound legal knowledge, her astute analytical skills, and impartial, impartial approach sorry, to the bench earned her the admiration and respect of both her colleagues and litigants. Her judgments were marked by a meticulous examination of facts, a thorough understanding of the law, 
and a deep sense of compassion for the individuals affected by the case before her. Over the course of her tenure, Justice Monica Joseph presided over numerous significant and complex cases, leaving an indelible impact on the legal landscape. Her judgments consistently upheld the rule of law and protected the rights and liberties of the people. Through her clarity of thought, eloquence, and reasoned arguments, she contributed to the development of legal precedence that will continue to shape the course of justice for years to come. Beyond the courtroom, she was fun-loving, and she was involved in so much other programs. She was a trailblazer, as was stated before. I had the opportunity of visiting her many times, at home, even at hospital, and she was extremely eloquent, she was extremely witty, and her memory was so intact that she would recall cases for me just at the snap of her fingers. And for that, I'm extremely grateful. We take this opportunity to express our deepest condolences to the family and friends of Justice Joseph, to her surviving siblings, Dr. Margaret Joseph, Patricia Rivera Nee Joseph, Jean Ortega Nee Joseph, and other family members. We stand in solidarity with you, and we take comfort in knowing that our contributions have have had a positive and ripple effect throughout the Caribbean and the lives of the persons in whom she would have touched. We thank you for sharing her with the legal fraternity, and we all are better because of her. Justice Joseph was an avid Catholic, and it is appropriate to end with the words of Paul to Timothy, second epistle, chapter four, verses six to eight, and I quote, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. May your soul rest in peace. Grateful to you, Monsieur President. I now call upon Mrs. Lady Sorry Anande Trotman Joseph. Lady Joseph is the chair of the Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti Corruption Bodies. Lady Joseph. Thank you very much. Good afternoon to Her Excellency, Dame Cecile Le Grenard, Honorable Prime Minister, Deacon Mitchell, distinguished attendees here this afternoon at this funeral, noting of course our leader of the opposition, <coughs> former Prime Minister, Mr. Tillman Thomas, our distinguished and esteemed judiciary represented here. I say too, we recognize the public officials and leaders who are here, Dame Monica's family, friends, and all who are here this afternoon. I could have adopted the protocol, but she was a stickler for all who knew her. So though I have abridged it somewhat, I did my best in the interest of time. I came to know Dame Justice Dr. Monica Joseph when she was appointed chair of Grenada's Integrity Commission. There, she inherited me as her deputy chairperson. At first, we sized each other up as I negotiated her stern, poker-faced demeanor 
of a judge. For all that we had already done in establishing the commission, after all, it was she who had drafted the laws that we were implementing as we operationalized the commission. She was the living legal authority on this area in Grenada. However, I was her junior in law and in life. But as we summed each other up, I determined that as her peer in the organization, I must sum up all the courage I had and speak up so that I could overcome my reflex deferential responses to the judge, Milady. I resolved that I had to do this, sometimes making assertions that were opposite to her views because all of the other commission, commissioners sorry, sat mum in her presence. Eventually, as I began to speak up, they too began to speak up. And very often, with a twinkle in her eyes, she listened to and accepted our views, even our counsel. As time went on, she made us commissioners all feel like we were a part of a team once we had found our voices with her. But although I speak of a time when I first served as a commissioner with her in Grenada's Integrity Commission, I share a little bit of who we knew her to be because she had come from regional judicial and public service as well, and she brought qualities back to Grenada that whilst working with Grenada's Integrity Commission would then go back out to the region and to the wider Commonwealth. I saw, along with my colleague commissioners, her qualities, which I share briefly with you this afternoon. She brought her leadership. We have heard of her many firsts, and indeed, she was the first chair of the Integrity Commission, succeeding Justice Sir Lyle St. Paul. The hallmarks of her leadership were integrity and impartiality. Of course, she had been a judge. She brought the zeal of her DNA and as laity in her Catholic Church. She brought wisdom from her vast regional and national experience and had just served as chairperson of Grenada's Public Service Commission. She brought effectiveness always lawyer and judge, urging us on, sometimes exhausting the professional staff team at the Integrity Commission. She urged us all, always read and follow the legal mandates of our governing legislation, and you wouldn't go wrong. And indeed, some years even after she had left us, as we were defended by King's Counsel Ruggles Ferguson, because we had listened to her, we were able to win the first seminal case that had been brought against the Integrity Commission in the state of Grenada. She focused and focused and focused on policies, systems, and logistics. She got the job done. She was also a teacher, and she brought that to us here and beyond. She taught me, for example, recusal in action. I remember once we were expected to interview a prospective applicant bearing the same last name as hers and mine. As we prepared as a commission for the interview, 
she turned to me and calmly told me, I have to recuse myself. I asked her why, but with her clip judicial style, she responded, he is a relative of mine from Caracol. She did not stop there. She went on to say, and by the way, your husband is also my cousin, you know. I, in turn, recused myself. <laughs> she was supportive, yet challenging. One time she said to me, you will have to wait until you're over 60 to be a leader in public life. And I retorted, perhaps a little, hopefully not rudely, that is what you think. She just smiled and let me be and said, you like challenges. There was another side that she brought to this stern integrity and anti-corruption sector. She was girlish. Despite this firm demeanor, she loved to laugh and often blushed when she was reminded of her youthful years or when she got, as she said, dolled up for her interviews or when we presented her with tokens of appreciations for birthdays and other achievements. But a main first for the organization that I represent this afternoon, the Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti-Corruption Bodies was her first. She was one of its main intellectual authors along with the chair of Dominica, Julian Johnson, and she played a pivotal role in the creation of the Regional Practitioners Network of heads of this organization. Indeed, with her as a role model, I humbly followed her footsteps, firstly becoming chairperson of Grenada's Integrity Commission after she retired, but then also as the regional chairperson of the CCAICACB. Twice over, the student had learned the lesson of a master teacher. Today, we can all reflect on her life so well lived and the legacy she leaves behind. It reminds me of an African proverb which I adapt and say, when an older person dies, a library burns to the ground. And as we reflect on all that we have heard of her life, indeed, Grenada's library in so many areas of her service is burnt, but in those embers, we will reach for the lessons that she has left, the example that she has left for us to follow. I share this afternoon deep condolences from the members of the CCAICACB. In tribute, I quote firstly, Dirk Harrison, a former contractor general of Jamaica and one of her successors as chair of this organization who says this of her. She was the consummate professional, both dignified in her delivery on all matters and astute in her consideration of the said matters. Finally, she definitely had no airs about her. I share two excerpts of a message which will be handed to De Monica's family from Common the Commonwealth Secretariat's Head of Governance and Peace and advisor to Her Excellency Baroness Patricia Scotland, Secretary General of the Commonwealth, who worked very closely with Dame Justice Joseph. 
and eulogized her by saying that she was the one who initiated and implemented considerable initiatives where, wherever and whenever she was in charge, especially with respect to the formation of a regional anti-corruption system. She was not only a servant leader, but also importantly, a transformational leader. She was a strategic thinker, a visionary who was brilliant, innovative, and a change agent. As such, she contributed much to the Commonwealth and the Caribbean region in many diverse ways. A region to which she generously gave her time, knowledge, expertise, and skills. She had a good sense of humor and a gentle demeanor. She was bright, logical, and systematic in her thinking. She was always willing to share her ideas and knowledge. I found in her a splendid person of great character. Only last May 2022, the CCAICACB honored Dame Justice's sterling contributions towards the building out of the platform on which we now all stand as an organization, which is now internationally recognized. On behalf of the executive and members of the CCAICACB, it is our co-joined solemn prayer that God would grant her soul rest in eternal peace. I thank you. Much obliged to you, Madam Chairperson of the Commonwealth Caribbean Association of Integrity Commissions and Anti-Corruption Bodies. We shall now listen to the music of the Royal Grenada Police Band as it performs for us Il Silencio of Andre Ryu. Ladies and gentlemen, the Royal Grenada Police Band.
I'd like to invite to this lectern Mrs. Jim Ortega, sister of the Monica. Hello friends, Dame Monica Joseph, DBE, CBE, LLD, first female judge of the OECS. This is written on an award that was presented her by the Grenada Bar Association. This is one of many awards received by Monica Joseph. Many awards. Only a deserving person can receive so many awards. Now, some of you may know her as Her Ladyship, the Honorable Monica Joseph, Justice Joseph, Retired Judge Joseph, Justice Monica. I know her as just my big sister. My big sister had a big heart. She was very generous, generous to a fault. She was discreet, fair, very fair. And I know for a fact that she gave people second chances. She was thoughtful of others, very empathetic. She didn't want to bother other people when she thought they were too busy. I know on certain occasions, I said, what about asking? And her response was, oh, they're too busy. I don't want to bother them. And that's when she herself sometimes needed help. She had patience. She would say to me, maybe they're busy, give them another two weeks. Now, I didn't have that type of patience, but she insisted, give them two more weeks. She would show someone how to do something, and then she had to repeat it and repeat. And it didn't bother her. She had the patience. Some of her peers, colleagues, mentioned that they went to her for advice. I also went to her for advice. Now, I don't live in Grenada. I've been in Canada forever. So I had to phone her to get advice. And I, my big sister always helped. And she was always there for me. And she knew how to choose her words discreetly. I could never do that. She was my mentor. She was one of a kind. On her CV, she wrote, quote unquote, from an early age and throughout my legal and judicial career, I have maintained 
independent thinking. I continue to maintain independent thinking wherever I serve. That was my big sister. She was not only a judge, she was also a family person. Now, we grew up as a close-knit family. We helped each other, we shared everything, and as the oldest of the siblings, my big sister had a certain responsibility which she took seriously. At an early age, she went to work to help the family resources and has always been a responsible person, almost overprotective. Family meant a lot to her. Her residence at Lansoping was the venue for family get-togethers. She entertained colleagues, friends, guests from all over. She made sure that they were always welcome and comfortable. She had friends everywhere. She was a family person. She organized trips to find family roots. We once traveled, she organized a trip to Kariku because a lot of Josephs live there. And she organized that trip to try to find our roots. She also organized trips to Calafini and other parts of Grenada where the Josephs came from. She also tried to find the family roots for the other side of the family, the honorary side of the family. She was a family person. She was the glue that kept the family together through search for roots, telephone calls, letters, and of course, get-togethers. We will now be our own glue as a family and we plan to continue this family ship, if there is such a word, in memory of our big sister, Monica. Family was very important to her. Now, I can say a lot more about my big sister, but there isn't time. However, I would like to read just one citation in its entirety. And this is where she received the honorary doctorate, Doctor of Laws. This was held at the University of the West Indies in Barbados. Uh, I think it was 2003 or four, when there was a hurricane that flattened part of Grenada. Her immediate family traveled to Barbados to support her. Our mother was there too. The public orator presented her to the Chancellor of the University Protocol. I think his name is Professor Fraser. And this is what he said. This is about 2003. Chancellor, three score years and ten ago, Monica Theresa Joseph came into this world. She attended the St. Joseph's Convent where the finest values of home and church, of family and God, of faith and integrity were infused in generous doses in preparation for an outstanding career as judge of the Supreme Court. As if further noble preparation for a life of service were necessary, she spent 10 years in the civil service of Grenada before proceeding to Britain to read law. That was in 1963. She was admitted to the bar at Lincoln's Inn in 1966. She returned to public service in Grenada in 1967 and became assistant secretary for external affairs in the Chief Minister's office, and then Senior Assistant Secretary in the Premier's office. In 1972, she moved to the Attorney General's office in St. Vincent 
as legal assistant and she moved rapidly through the ranks of Crown Counsel, Senior Crown Counsel, Solicitor General, Director of Public Prosecutions, breaking the tradition of male domination as she went along. In 1982, she was appointed Supreme Court Judge in the Organization of Eastern Caribbean States, serving in Anguilla, Dominica, Tortola, St. Lucia, St. Vincent and the Grenadines, and Montserrat. From 1992, she acted on the Court of Appeal, serving in the remaining Lesser Antilles of Antigua, Anguilla, St. Lucia, St. Kitts, and Grenada. She came to know the islands of the OECS better than the Liat pilots themselves, who flew her in, out, and sometimes over. Although she retired from the Supreme Court in 1996, she just goes on serving like the Energizer Bunny. We all know the Energizer Bunny. She has been deputy to the Governor General of Grenada, Boundaries Commissioner for Turks and Caicos, Boundaries Commissioner and Adjudication Officer of the British Virgins, Chairman of the Public Service Commissions of Grenada, Chairman of the Coalition for the Rights of the Disabled, President of the Grenada Netball Association, and member of the Roman Catholic Youth, Assault, Youth Commission, and a host of other committees. And in 1997, this jewel in the crown of these jewels of the Caribbean was recognized by the Queen with the award of Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire, or CBE. Chancellor, like her namesake, Mother Teresa of Calcutta, Monica Teresa Joseph, has been mother to many thousands. She has brought her good judgment and cheerful approach to bear on every conceivable human and civil problem. In the words of her fellow jurists, she listens and probes and is totally impartial. She was married to her work and ministering mother to more than half a million people. She has lived a life of love and service, and at this time of challenge to the people of her beloved country, Grenada, we know she will continue to inspire, guide, and serve her people. And so, I invite you, Chancellor, to recognize our very own Mother Teresa, Justice Joseph, Commander Monica, who has been all things to all the people of these islands by conferring on her the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. My dear big sister, you have earned your rest. You are now at peace. May you rest in peace. It broke our hearts to lose you, but you did not go alone. For part of us went with you the day God called you home. Adieu, my big sister. I'll see you on the other side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Ortega. Ladies and gentlemen, 
It is my esteemed honor to now invite our esteemed Prime Minister, Honorable Mr. Dickon Mitchell, to grace this podium. Honorable Mr. Mitchell. Your Excellency, to the family, relatives and friends of Justice Joseph, distinguished members of the judiciary, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to join you here this afternoon in celebration of the remarkable life of her ladyship, Justice Monica Joseph. A daughter of the soil who was not only a distinguished legal luminary but also a symbol of hope, resilience and progress. As the first woman to be appointed as a justice of the then Supreme Court of the West Indies Associated States, now the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Justice Joseph secured her place in the annals of Grenadian and Caribbean history. However, it was her unmatched commitment to excellence and the genuine desire to serve her country and the region that earned her the utmost respect from her peers and the gratitude and love of a nation and the region. Hers was a life truly dedicated to public service, lending her wealth of knowledge and professionalism towards the advancement of Grenada and the wider region. And for this, we are eternally grateful. The American Supreme Court Justice and a trailblazer in her own right, Ruth Bader Ginsburg once said, and I quote, real change, enduring change, happens one step at a time, unquote. For her part, Justice Joseph took several significant steps towards progress and the impact of her contributions will resonate for generations to come. As we bid farewell to the extraordinary Justice Monica Joseph, and as we honor her memory, I invite us all to carry a spirit of justice, compassion, perseverance in our hearts as we all aspire towards a fair and just society. May we too strive to uphold the values she held dear and continue her legacy of service to our beloved nation and our beloved region. On my own behalf, on behalf of the people and government of Grenada, and also specifically on behalf of the distinguished Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonzalez, and the government and people of St. Vincent. I express our collective profound condolences to the family of Justice Joseph. Thank you for permitting her to serve the region. May your soul rest in eternal peace. Grateful to you, Honorable Prime Minister. Our next speaker hails from the beautiful island 
of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. She was called to the bar of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in October 1976. She was the first female lawyer to be elected to the Parliament of St. Vincent and the Grenadines in 2001. She has an expansive legal career. She was responsible for establishing managing and operating the offshore finance sector body of St. Vincent and the Grenadines from 1976 to 1986. She opened her solo practice in 1986. She was elected to Parliament in 2001 and re-elected in 2005. She was a senior member of the cabinet holding the portfolios of tourism and culture from the years 2001 to 2005 and the portfolios for urban development, culture, labor, and electoral matters from the year 2005 to 2010. I speak of none other than Miss Renee Mercedes Batiste, LLB Honors, Barrister, Solicitor, Notary Public, and Certified Mediator. Miss Batiste serves the following other organizations in leadership positions. The St. Vincent Girl Guides Association as President. She now manages her law firm, Batiste & Co and practices mainly in corporate, commercial, family, probate, and property law. To deliver the eulogy to us this afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I give you over to Ms. Renee Mercedes Batiste. Your Excellency, Governor General of Grenada, Honorable Prime Minister, other members of Cabinet, members of the Diplomatic Corps, Justices of Appeal of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Justices of the High Court, Masters, members of the Bar of Grenada and other OECS countries, distinguished guests, members of the family, ladies and gentlemen, Good evening. I bring you greetings on this sad occasion from my Prime Minister as well. If you know Rav Gonzalez very well, he'll phone five people to make sure at least one would remember to say, send my sentiments to the family and people. Dame Monica Teresa Joseph, I know that folks would be wondering how did I arrive at this podium? So I have a story to tell, and my language will not be the language used at the bar table. You see, Shakespeare said, and I quote, all the world's a stage, and all the men and women merely players. They have their entrances and their exits. So it is with our beloved sister and friend. I met Dame Monica in the mid-1970s, as a law student completing my internship at the chambers of the Attorney General, the colorful Arthur Francis Williams, very flamboyant character, well-meaning and generous, to a fault. On the other hand, in the chambers, in the door on the right-hand side, was quiet, dignified, lovely lady. To me, she always appeared to be nailed to her desk and always busy. She was a legal assistant, an assistant the legal draftsman, an Englishman named Mr. Harwood, who came at the time to the Attorney General's chambers to help with the law revision. The staff at the Attorney General's chambers liked her immensely. She was always so busy 
We couldn't understand what was it that she was doing that made her so terribly busy. But they would be in and out of her office, not with the daily work of the chambers, but because she can offer them some quiet calm in their spirits. She was a charmer, always smiling. She was the one that knew the joke behind her smile. I recall her being present at my call in 1976, and I know many are busy calculating my age at this time. My mom admired her so much that she admonished me to be like these two ladies, Sylvia Bertrand from Dominica, who was at the time serving as registrar of the High Court, and Monica Joseph from Grenada, tall, stately, shoulders always pushed back, polite lady lawyer, neatly dressed, and her other friend, Miss Agnes Cato, always in a black suit. What role models for a young woman to be sworn in among a sea of male lawyers who seemed to dominate the bar back then. I witnessed her movement from legal assistant to crown counsel, to senior crown counsel, to DPP, and solicitor general. She made it all the way up to the ladder in this very envious profession. Apparently so smoothly, but we knew otherwise. She worked tirelessly you see, she couldn't afford errors or missteps. She knew that so many admired her, her logic, her knowledge, her calm demeanor, her sweet spirit, and yes, that laughter. It just seemed to so many of us, the smile never left this lady's face until you pushed the door of her chambers. She was very visible in her social work in St. Vincent. In that work, she was a guider, and I could still see her pushing on her belt around her waist. The Girl Guide Association leaders reminded me that she was a district commissioner and a divisional commissioner. Her mentees are all so sorrowful this past few weeks. You see, they knew, she said, always sit upright, please, ladies. Cross your legs. Don't slouch. Today, the Speaker of our House of Assembly was one who knew her too. It's the found time for other charitable work with disabled persons. And a few of my colleagues reminded me that she presented herself for a small part in a dramatic skit with members of the bar. Could you imagine that today in this century? I don't think many of us gathered around, knew or would recall that she even played old mass. That was before she was elevated to the bench. When she got to the bench, it was an occasion for quiet celebration. A woman had made it to the bench to preside over both the civil and criminal jurisdiction of the High Court, the very first. On the international news, it would be breaking the glass ceiling at that time, there were very few female lawyers in St. Vincent. Herself, Ms. Bertrand, Agnes Cato, Lafleur, and then, imagine me as number four. So you, could, you couldn't understand what it meant to me and my colleague, Mrs. Bacchus Batiste. Monica Joseph was the wind beneath my wings. I would go before her in the 80s with my young niece in tow into her chambers with her permission, of course. She would smile at her. St. Vincent of the Grandies was so fortunate to have this servant of God with her polished and stately stride, her deep and sober wisdom, delivering judgment after judgment after judgment in her perch at the Palais de Justice. Yes, the celebrated case I heard Senior Alexis speaking about yesterday, the tributes in the High Court, the silver versus the state. This was on the lips of so many Vincentians. Lawyers disagreed with her judgment, surely. 
but she had endured herself to the man on the street. She became known as Tanti Monica, or Auntie Monica. They knew and recognized her sense of fairness and justice. Folks of my generation would readily understand what those words mean and were meant to convey in our Caribbean village. If you had a stubborn child, a hard-headed and highly strong individual, you see the mother of the family would seek out three members, grandmother, grandfather, and tante. You would not dare contradict the verdict, the scolding, or the warning from tante. So lovingly delivered by her, with some iron force beneath it, you would feel the power within her judgment. The pointed legal logic. That was how the general Vincentian public felt about her and the judgments. Tante Monica done talk, amen. Don't go back there. March him off to jail, Tante Monica. And the Calypsonians did her tribute. Matter fixed. Matter over. So she earned, even though you had some political figures of the past that seemed to want to dent her stride, you see her integrity remained unquestioned and unstained. I recall a high profile politician having a difference of opinion with her into the 2000s. But in a matter involving the Protection of Employment Act in St. Vincent, I recall him saying very gently, I don't agree with her interpretation, you know, but if Monica Joseph says so, it's so. If that response was not characteristic of that individual, but the respect that she engendered from the political class back then is unmatched. She was a faithful Catholic. Who could handle the bench and the bar without the favor of the Lord? She was indeed highly favored by him. She was steadfast in her devotions. I tell you now that I am old and mature, that I have learned to adopt her calm when storms rage about me and around me. What a powerful living testimony Tante Monica left for me. When it dawned on me how greatly blessed she was to so quietly ascend, being the first female judge in the OECS and then the acting justice of appeal, I hope we can learn to cherish these nuggets of gold, pebbles thrown in our paths in the generations to follow. Independence sounds usual, honor, exceptional, integrity unmatched. See, she served her native Grenada, as I've heard of, over and over, as Deputy Governor General. You know what would have happened in another country apart from this? We in the profession knew that from time to time she undertook special projects from the court and served with several served several committees and consultancies from time to time. Indeed, we mourn the loss of a great soul stuffed with moral grit, grace, wisdom, and knowledge. I hope that her memory will be honored, and I speak not only of the accolades already received, but we must find some way, since there's a Norman Manley Law School and a Hugh Wooden Law School and Sherlock Hall, what would be in honor of Monica Theresa? I hope the OECS would treasure her memory to ensure that it would not be lost only to the fading pages of newspapers, but we would find a fitting memorial to keep her memory alive. Because she, what she exemplified in our profession excellence, honor, integrity, and mobility. We can recite so many lines from all sorts of poets and venerable individuals. I want all my own words to ring in my soul, echo in my spirit, and remain in my memory and in my bones. So I leave you with these few lines I penned Sunday afternoon in the blazing sun, coming through my windows, turning my room pink. And it goes like this. Tall and stately, she strides across the outer porch of the courthouse, 
but a sweet smile on her face, the joke remembered only by her, the humor ever present. She pushed the door and entered her chambers, her orderly, faithful, a few steps behind her, in uniform, crisp and white. She sat down at the head of a long mahogany table. Practitioners would enter after the bailiff's call. Now, she sits with St. Monica and St. Teresa, as the master called and she entered, saying, here I am, Lord, your servant, Monica Teresa. I have done your will on earth. Now may I enter heaven? I have answered your call through heaven's door. St. Peter moved aside. She turned to him and said, I think I love it here, Lord. So now I'm going to do your will in heaven as I did on earth. End quote. Rest easy, Dame Monica Teresa. Be at peace. This journey has ended. To the family, I say, please accept the sympathies of the Prime Minister and his family, the government and people of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. To my colleagues and other distinguished guests here, our deepest sympathies from the members of the bar of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Sister Sir Optimus, and all the girl guides in St. Vincent and the Grenadines. Rest in peace, Tante Monica, rest in peace. We are indeed grateful to you, Ms. Renee Batiste, for your kind reminder, generous reminder of the ideals we are to attain in emulating the life of our dear Dean, Monica Teresa Joseph. The expression of thanks would be uttered by Sister of the Deceased, Marguerite Joan Joseph, MBBS, Sister of the Deceased. Good afternoon, and late as it is, let me welcome you. Very glad to see you here. My job is, on behalf of our family, to say thank you. Dame Cecile, we wish to thank you for your grace and for gracing us with your presence. The Right Honorable Prime Minister, Deacon Mitchell Esquire. Thank you for being here, sir. Pleased to see you for the very first time in the flesh. Of course, your reputation precedes you. And it's a good one, so please don't mistake that or ambig 
Oh, be ambiguous. Let us not be ambiguous about that. The lead, ah, leader of the opposition, uh, Dr. Keith Mitchell, Mr. Tillman Thomas, and Ms. Claudette Joseph. Thank you, you dignitaries, for being here with us. I would like to thank all the people who went into or put their effort into making this event one that is so meaningful to us, one that has touched our hearts. And my family here on the on, on this side would want me to say that. I would like to say something that no one has said. My sister Monica, as a judge, was trained at the Vatican for approximately between six months and a year in canon law. And this is something she has always been quiet about. I don't think anybody knows, but of course, I do know. And it made me feel so awed that she was uh, recognized or chosen for this position. Now, when you're saying thanks, you're in, you could be in deep waters. So, first I would like to thank the choir and those persons, Ms. Lorraine Ramdaddy, Mr. Randall Robinson, and Dr. Jenny Isaacs, for putting their beautiful voices into our hearts today. Thank the choir for their effort in getting the, the hymns together and possibly rehearsing them. Uh, there was also something that I would like to, shall I say, reveal today. We were talking, we, we have asked for uh, no floral tributes. These are simply decorative. And this is because my sister in her last couple of weeks was saying something that I thought was not relevant. And I kept telling her, leave that for later. We'll come to that eventually. So at some point, she kept saying, I want a fund. I want a fund. She kept saying that. And it was only after she passed, I realized she wanted no flowers. She wanted a fund. So while everything came as a surprise to us, uh, it may not have been such a big surprise to her in terms of the timing of her passing. So we are resolved as a family, and we have indicated to the bar, or to the executive of the bar, that we intend to register a company which will be the fund. The purpose of this fund, in keeping with her own approach to life in general, is to assist young people. We are thinking, and we have not made the final decision because we are think, we're trying to think like she would think. And we don't know if we're doing it fully yet. But the initial thought is that it would go for students of the legal profession who may not have all the funding that they need in order to study law. I would also, so please give generously into the fund. Uh, certainly the bar will know about it. And um, 
we would certainly be a, a sort of a channel towards the fund. When I say we, I mean the family. We'd also like to thank um, the Royal Grenada Police Force Band for their beautiful music. We'd like to thank the Girl Guides uh, for acting in the roles that they have been doing and will continue to do today because I know that once a guide, of course, always a guide, so she is a guide. We all are guides, as a matter of fact. And uh, so with that, I would say farewell until we meet at the cemetery. And uh, thank you, a big thank you, a heartfelt thank you, heartfelt thank you. If I have not called any names, it's not because of lack of respect, but because, um, what should I, I should put it down to advancing seniority. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the end of this segment of this afternoon's service. We now ask that the family proceed for the, for the to say to bid final farewell to Dame Monica. We ask the family to proceed to the entrance of the church to bid their final farewells. We ask the remainder of our congregation to please remain seated as the family enjoys private moments with, as they bid their final farewells. And as the family proceeds, in parting, I want to leave these final words, which she shared with me at her bedside nearly two weeks ago. In speaking of an institution, she remarked, one creates a perfect system, but people break the rules. And she encouraged me, Jenny, keep the rules. Her legacy is of the stuff dreams are made of. She once shared with me how if she had not disclosed a factor during a trial, she would have won a case at the bar against one of the Caribbean's greatest 
Juris. She could not have accepted this win. She accepted her private conscience in place of her success. We are encouraged now to take on the banner, take on her banner, to take up the banner. I will surely miss the Monica. Who will I hear such genuine laughter from? I will see no more her dapper dress, her African ethnic robes. Who will fight for the passion, the pension and passion of judges? Who will loop together our Joseph family by requesting us younger ones to draw up family trees as a summer vacation assignment? Who will protect Auntie Monica's children in St. Vincent? Who will guard the interests of our sisters, Jean, Patricia, and Margaret? Who will host the annual parties? It is you, dear colleagues, family, nieces, and nephews. Our dame has finished her course and has taken up her crown in the upper chamber. And you can take up the baton. Dame Monica Teresa Joseph, stateswoman, we salute you. Your life is an institution whose walls were established by your practice of virtue, tempered with your love. Your memory lives on in our hearts. We strive to be like you. Fare thee well, dear loved one. We shall meet again. We now have the commendation of the body. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you at this time. In the waters of baptism, Monica died with Christ and rose with him to new life. May she now share with him eternal glory. baptism, Monica put on the white garment. On this moment, at this moment, we are we reminded of baptism, the, her baptism, and pray that the Lord would present her and welcome her. We shall sing our entrance hymn. Thank you. 
And so this is a painful time for the family as they gather on the coffin. We lift them up in prayer, praying that even now the Lord will strengthen them, praying that even now the Lord will help them in this midst, in this time of sadness and pain, that he will come to know that he's with them and that she's with him in glory. I'd like to acknowledge the presence of our bishop, Bishop Clyde Martin Harvey. I'd like to acknowledge all the dignitaries led by our Governor General and our Prime Minister. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual light shine upon her. May her soul and indeed the souls of all the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, who alone are able to give life after death, free your servant Monica from all sins, that she who believed in the resurrection of your Christ may, when the day of resurrection comes, be united with you in glory. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is taken from Wisdom, chapter three, three, sorry, reading from verses 1 to 9, and will be proclaimed by Her Excellency, Dame Cecile Lagrenard. The souls of the virtuous are in the hands of God. No torment shall ever touch them. In the eyes of the unwise, they did appear to die. Their going looked like a disaster. They're leaving us like an annihilation, but they are at peace. If they experienced punishment as men see it, their hope was rich with immortality. Slight was their affliction, great will their blessings be. God has put them to the test and proved them worthy to be with him. And he has tested them like gold in a furnace and accepted them as a holocaust. When the time comes for his visitation, they will shine out. As sparks run through the stubble, so will they. They shall judge nations, rule over peoples, and the Lord will be their king forever. Those who trust in him will understand the truth. Those who are faithful to live with him in love for grace and mercy await those he has chosen. The word of the Lord.
Second Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, and then verses 6 to 10, proclaimed by Mr. Richie Donald. We are only the earthenware jars. That hold this treasure. To make it clear that such an overwhelming power comes from God and not from us. We are in difficulties on all sides but never cornered. We see no answer to our problems, but never despair. We have been persecuted, but never deserted, knocked down, but never killed. Always, wherever we may be, we carry with us in our body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus, too, may always be seen in our body. Indeed, while we are still alive, we are consigned to our debt every day for the sake of Jesus, so that in our mortal flesh, the life of Jesus, too, may be openly shown, so death is at work in us, but life in you. But we have the same spirit of faith that is mentioned in Scripture. I believe, and therefore I spoke, we too believe. And therefore, we too speak, knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus to life will raise us with Jesus in our turn and, to, and put us by his side and you with us. You see, all this is for your benefit. So the more grace is multiplied among people, the more thanksgiving there will be to the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Alleluia. My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. The mother of the sons of Zebedee came with them to make a request of him and bowed low. And he said to her, What is it you want? She said to him, Promise that these two sons of mine may sit one at your right hand and the other at your left in your kingdom you do not know what you're asking Jesus answered can you drink the cup that I'm going to drink they replied we can very well he said 
you shall drink my cup. But as for my seats, but as for seats at my right hand and my left, these are not mine to grant. They belong to those to whom they have been allotted by my father. When the other ten heard this, they were indignant with the two brothers. But Jesus called them to him and said, You know that among the pagans, the rulers lord it over them, and their great men make their authority felt. This is not to happen among you. No. Anyone who wants to be great among you must be your servant. And anyone who wants to be first among you must be your slave. Just as the Son of Man came not to be served but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. What is it you want? Jesus asked her. What is it you want? Notice that Jesus in today's first reading is directing the question at her. And eventually as you read through the gospel, he moves, he moves the focus from her in the context of what she wants to the next step of what she can do and what her two brothers, what her two sons can do. We gather here today to celebrate and give God thanks for our sister, Monica. We gather here this afternoon and we've heard all the tributes of her life, of her service, of her ministry, of her giving of herself. We thank God for Monica. We thank God for her service. But we gather here as well to pray. To pray for Monica. Our task isn't just to say thank you God, but to pray that as Monica continues this spiritual journey to God, that God will welcome her into the halls of heaven. That's our task, to pray. But as we pray, we are mindful of the fact that Monica gave of herself. We are mindful of the fact that Monica served and she served well. And because she served well, our prayer is that God will look on her service. And that God, and as God looks on her service, God will receive her to himself. That's our task. I remember Monica especially from the perspective of youth ministry. Monica was the chairman of the Youth Commission when I was youth coordinator in this diocese from 2000 to 2002. And she played a very important role because for her, youth, young people and children were important. Important in the context of how do we pass on to them the wisdom as they take on the roles of life. It's sad that in today's reality, that wisdom is not being passed on as it should. Not from the point of view of the elderly and the grandparents whom we have, we just celebrated that on Sunday, the Catholic Church, our Holy Father has designated the, 20, the 23rd of July, or at least the last Sunday, the second or last Sunday of the month, to grandparents just as we have fathers and mothers we have dedicated that Sunday to grandparents and the elderly in order that we can acknowledge all that they have done all that they've contributed all that they have to contribute to the young and therefore it's unfortunate that someone like Monica is gone because she had so much to offer as we gather here this afternoon Let's be reminded that it is not about power. It is not about control. It is not about who is in charge. Those three words, powerful as they may sound, are detrimental. I am in charge. 
But let us, on the other hand, look at it from the perspective of, I am here to serve. How can I serve? How can I give of myself? And therefore, as I give of myself, I'm doing so in love. It is interesting that today we chose, today was the day chosen for Monica's funeral. Because today, incidentally, or spiritually, in a faithful, in a faith perspective, falls on the day when we celebrate the feast of St. James, the apostle, and one of the first leaders of the church. We thank God for St. James, and we thank God for his ministry and service. The reading today helps us to look at James before he took on this role. One of the disciples, one of the three disciples, the inner circle of Jesus. And yet here was the mother of James and John coming to say, I want my sons, one to sit on my right or on my left. In other words, it was about power, about control. That's, and Jesus is saying to her, and he's saying to us today, no, that's not what Christianity is about. Christianity is about service. How can I serve and how can I serve with love? And if you want any classic example of what service means, look at Jesus on that cross. That service, dying to self so that by dying to self, others may have life and have it to the full. Hard to put into practice, difficult to put into practice, but by God's grace. And so as we gather here, to thank God, yes, for Monica. As we gather here to pray for her soul, I pray that all that we've heard today, from the legal perspective, from her family, from her loved ones, from all who have shared about her life, that we will take that and not just bury it with her, but that we will seek to put it into practice. But let us pray especially that Monica's, that all that we have heard about Monica, will be passed on to our young people and in that way helping them at a time when so much is happening the context of violence the context of suicides and all that's taking place that we can help our young people and our children to appreciate life to value life to celebrate life to live in service as God would want us to live in service to be of service to one another and in so doing in so doing, therefore, in hope to experience the glory of God. May the soul of Monica come to rest in peace. And to you, the family and loved ones of Monica, trust God. She's at peace. Do not think that because she's in this coffin, that's it. Her life still lives on in you and in all others. May you, as you remember her, be proud, be thankful, and may God bless you in the midst of your sadness and your pain. May he help you to know that he loves you and that she is at rest. Amen. At this time, we'll have our prayers of intercession. So I'd like those who are to be offering the prayers of intercession to come forward. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father, where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord. Jesus, we join our prayers to his. Your response, hear our prayer. Yeah, okay. In baptism, 
Monica received the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Our sister, Monica, was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Monica seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for your, our sister, Monica. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We thank you, Lord, for Monica, who served, as, who served in the legal profession. Pray, Lord, that you bless her in your abundance and that you grant her all the desires that you wish for her. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Eternal Father, you created us in your own image and likeness, but sin has warped the minds of men and throughout the world there is much injustice and much carelessness of the rights of other people and personal responsibility. Lord, when you are excluded from the hearts and consciences of men, the inevitable result is that people suffer. And Lord, there is much injustice and corruption taking place in our world today, not only in the lives of individuals, but also in the corridors of power and the council rooms of many nations. We pray, Lord, that you right all wrongs that are taking place in our world and vindicate those that are being treated unjustly. Keep us, Father, from trying to take matters into our own hands for vengeance is yours, and you will repay. But Lord, in your grace and mercy, we pray that you would give justice and peace to all those that have been cruelly and unfairly treated by their fellow man and may injustice and carelessness that they have had to endure be the means to draw them onto your saving arms of grace. We ask this in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. Lord, hear us. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. And so, Lord, hear all our prayers, those on our lips, those on our hearts. Grant them, we pray, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, a collection will be taken up. The collection is in honor of Monica to be given to the various charities of which Monica was patron. So we ask you to give generously towards this effort as we sing our, our hymn, You Are To God Be The Glory. So as we sing the hymn, To God Be The Glory, we take up our collection. Please give generously towards this effort.
the sand for the offertory. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Almighty and merciful God, by means of these sacrificial offerings, wash away, we pray, in the blood of Christ, the sins of your departed sister Monica, and purify unceasingly by your merciful forgiveness these those you once cleanse in the waters of baptism through Christ our Lord The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your command, for it is at your summons that we come to birth by your will that we are governed and at your command that we return on account of sin so that to, to that earth from which we came 
And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, o Lord. The fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore these gifts we pray. By sending forth your spirit upon them like the Jewfold. So that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world. For by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit remember Lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope Clyde Martin Harvey our Bishop all the bishops all the clergy all the religious and all your faithful people remember your servant Monica whom you have called from this world to yourself Grant that she who is united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all gathered here this afternoon. Have mercy on the family and loved ones of Monica as they grieve, as they mourn her loss. Have mercy on them. Have mercy on each one of us gathered here as we remember and celebrate the life of Monica. Have mercy on us. Help us, Lord. Enable us that we may come to serve and serve with love as we seek to build up the kingdom, your kingdom here on earth, have mercy that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, 
Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint James, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching we dare to pray our Father, Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our day that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe. From all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom and the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who will live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. With you. Let us offer to each other that sign of peace. Let there be love, let, let there, there be, be love shared among us, let there be love in our hearts. May now this love sweep this nation, cause us the Lord to arise, give us a fresh understanding, brotherly love that is Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the, the world, world, have mercy on us. Lamb, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace.
Behold Jesus, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring all of us to life everlasting, as the church says. Amen.
Having received the sacrament of your only begotten Son, who was sacrificed for us and rose in glory, we humbly implore you, O Lord, for your departed servant Monica, that, cleansed by the Paschal mysteries, she may glory in the gift of the resurrection to come through Christ our Lord. They are. Monica was a Cassiesta, so we invite to invite the Cassiestas at some point in the final commendation to come forward, as well as the St. Joseph Convent Girls um, Association, Almata, to come forward. So. The rest of you may sit for a moment, please. Are there any Kusiistas here? No? Okay. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Monica Joseph 
And now we come to this last farewell. There is always sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although as a congregation we will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith that is ours in Jesus Christ. And in this final commendation, we commend her to the Lord, but we also commend her to ourselves and to our own memories, our own life yet to be completed. When I first heard of Monica's death, my mind went immediately to another Monica, Monica Barnes, justice in Trinidad, and in many ways a similar woman, tremendous influence wherever she was. And as we commend her to God that she may enter into the fullness of God's presence, once more I pray for the legal profession in Grenada and throughout the region. Somebody said to me after Celine's funeral, it is not easy to be a young lawyer today. I was quite struck by that. Perhaps it's not easy to be a retired lawyer either. But in any case, the legal profession needs our support. And as her cousin said, it's a question of seeing the right and doing it. So we pray for all of you, lawyers, and also the members of the protective services who are here, because so much depends on you as the future of Grenada unfolds. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you take you to himself. May angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Eternal life grant unto her, O Lord. And let perpetual life shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Can we have the Cosista song, please?
Let us stand. So into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister, Monica Joseph, justice and woman extraordinaire, in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the many blessings which you bestowed upon her in this life and through her on Grenada. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and our sister forever. The Lord be with you. Your Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Merciful Lord, you know the anguish of the sorrowful and you are attentive to the prayers of the humble. Hear your people, the family and friends of Monica Joseph who cry out to you in their need and strengthen their hope in your lasting goodness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Eternal life grant unto her, O Lord. And let the light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. May her soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. And may the love of God and the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ bless and console you and gently wipe every tear from your eyes. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May the angels take you into paradise. May the martyrs come to welcome you on your way and lead you into the holy city, Jerusalem. May the choir of angels welcome you and with Lazarus who once was born. May you, Monica, have everlasting rest. The Alma Mater of St. Joseph Gondor. Can we start the Alma Mater?
Carry your candle. Ladies and gentlemen, you are asked to remain seated while Her Excellency, the Governor General, takes her leave. Her Excellency, the Governor General, and the Honorable Prime Minister and other dignitaries take their leave. Please stand for the final commendation. Recessional hymn, carry your candle. There is a candle in every soul, some brightly burning, some dark and cold. There is a spirit who brings a fire, ignites a candle. No. 